Welcome to the first go round of Salty Takeaways for 2022. I don't know how salty the takeaways will be after the big win by Atlanta United over Sporting Kansas City 3 1. John here, Jared there, and Jared, I know that you're on a bit of a limited clock, so we'll just get right to it. What did you think of the 90 minutes? Uh, people will bitch a lot less when things go like that. Uh, <laughs> That's three points against a good Sporting Kansas City team, where by the end of the game you were throwing uh, you were throwing guys out there in situations that you usually would not throw them out in there to because you needed bodies to just do a job. That's a fantastic win. Um, Joseph gets you two assists. Uh, he'll tell you he should have had a couple goals probably. I mean, look, you already got instant returns out of Dom Dwyer. Yes. Uh, Caleb Wiley gets gets a goal like it, it was it was a dream start that's all I got for you there well and I mean so then let's go backwards and let's look at Caleb Wiley and it took Caleb I think 15 minutes to get that first goal and when and you and I have seen this as a part of his progression from his time with Atlanta United too. And I know that uh, one of our preseason questions that we had in one of the shows on SDH was how many appearances Caleb Wiley will have for Atlanta United here in 2022. And Caleb Wiley showed you instantly that he belongs and he was playing on the wing and not as a back. He was because the situation called for it. Um, ideally, you want to put guys in the situation to succeed, especially young players. And it's a tough ask today. It was a tough ask for George Campbell. We'll get to that because you're asking Campbell to play as a center back pairing with Miles Robinson against a team that wants to have the ball, that is going to press you and put you under pressure. This isn't like playing George Campbell against Cincinnati, who's not going to press him for the ball and who might challenge him on set pieces. Like this was, this was your, you can't switch off, man. And you did switch off a couple times, but never got burned for it. But you threw Caleb Wiley into a tough situation, and he just ran with it, man. Um, so calm in front of net and that opportunity. Marcelino Moreno comes in with 15 minutes. And as good as the midfield was, Marcelino Moreno has a little something extra that he brings to that midfield to just unlock teams. It's, it's, it's one of those things I think we overlook with Moreno a lot. And when he's not there, you notice it a lot more. Then when he comes back, you're thinking, oh. He made a really good pass. He did it three or four times in a row. Of course he did. That's what he does. And George Campbell, obviously, once again, you know, we talked about being you know, not intimidated by your surroundings. Caleb Wiley wasn't. George Campbell wasn't. Uh, George and Miles uh, combined for keeping the ball out of the net in the first half when uh, uh, it was last line of defense right there in the goal mouth. And they end up you know, knocking it away. It ended up being a corner, uh, the, the eventual result of that play. But once again, not intimidated by your surroundings, calm in a situation that needed a lot of calm, especially with the frantic uh, elements that were a part of that first 45 with Sporting Kansas City and Atlanta United. And then uh, going back to, uh, you know, the obviously Dom Dwyer getting the second goal just before the half. That was a, a bit of a backbreaker, I think, for Sporting Kansas City. But Dom Dwyer gives you the dream start that you're looking for out of him. Once again, you didn't know how many minutes you could get from Dom. He gives you 70, but it was 70 because of necessity. What did you think of Dom Dwyer today? Uh, Dom Dwyer did everything you could have asked of him in this game and more. Um, he put Fontas, like you got to draw a chalk outline for whatever's left of Fontas at the edge of the box when he just dribbles around him and Fontas is left stabbing at air. Then he beats Millia near post. Uh, he did everything you asked him and more. And in, more importantly, it was a situation that you weren't expecting to put him in. You're not asking Dom Dwyer to play 70 minutes most times. And he was out of gas at the end. And understandably, he worked his ass off the entire game. It did a really good job. You know, great hold-up play, drew some fouls, can kind of try to get under guys' skin sometimes. Uh, Joseph was able to play off of him. They both probably will tell you they left goals on the field. Um, Lennon plays that ball into to Dom Dwyer late, and I think Dom Dwyer a year or two ago, maybe three years ago, gets to that. It's just that little burst that maybe not isn't what it was at this point, and he toe taps it just wide. Um, but overall, there's nothing. I, I mean, you're nitpicking at this point with Dom Dwyer. He came in and gave you exactly what you asked of him in a situation that you didn't expect to ask of him. 
Then going back to goal number one, which necessitated Don Dwyer giving us 70 minutes, uh, the, the moments that we've come to expect from Luis Arujo, Gonzalo Pineda after the match, on Arujo didn't give an update, but he said obviously it did not look good. And when you have someone that is the artist that Luis Arujo is, it was the pressure that we've come to know from Atlanta United and Gonzalo Pineda that created the opportunity for Aruju with the assist from Joseph off of the, the lovely, just the, the lovely touch from Joseph there. Aruju puts it in the net for the first goal of the match, but uh, obviously a lot of concern coming out of the blocks for Atlanta United. It is, and it sucks that, you know, he, he picks up that injury. We'll have to wait and see. Hamstrings, if you've ever pulled a muzzle, muscle, you know how fickle they can be. Um, they can they can they can linger for a while. You just there's just no good way to predict them. You just gotta let them heal up and let the let the fibers you know heal up in whatever you whatever you've pulled in that muscle. It looks like for him it was that hamstring. Um, we can get into more of it tomorrow on Monday morning show. But it was fascinating watching like a sporting Kansas City loves to have the ball. Man, there were moments where Atlanta had them in hell counter pressing. Like they were not ready for it. And it was then it one of. Part of that is, and not to discredit Atlanta, Atlanta was very effective with it. Kansas City didn't look like they were ready, they were ready to deal with it. They wanted no part of it at times. Looking at the numbers, courtesy of our friends at SofaScore, breaking down the numbers as we have them. Looking at uh, Atlanta United, pretty much sixes and sevens across the board. Uh, you got Brandon at 6.4 wearing the captain's armband today. Pretty much everybody with sevens on the back line. George Campbell with a 6.9. Uh, Marcedes with a 6.9. Ozzy Alonso getting the yellow at 6.4. Mateus Vesecchio at a 6.6. Aruju at 7.3. Joseph at a 7.6. Tyler Wolf at a 7.0. Even Steven there. Uh, Marcelina Moreno with a 7.7 in his limited time in the 15 minutes he was there. Dom Dwyer a 7-2, Brooks Lennon a 7 even, Caleb Wiley gets a 7.3 for uh, Atlanta United. Looking at the statistics across the board in the match, possession, 56% of the possession goes to Sporting Kansas City. Atlanta United had the edge early on in the possession numbers, but Sporting ends up with 56% of the ball, 14 shots for Kansas for Sporting, only two on target, and that's big. Atlanta had 12 shots, half of them on target. And block shots 5-2 to two for Sporting Kansas City. Uh, looking at fouls, once again, Atlanta United proving that they will be, probably without a doubt, the most fouled team in Major League Soccer. 15 fouls on the day for Sporting Kansas City, yet the uh, yellow cards until late went to uh, Atlanta United. That's something we'll probably get into here in just a little bit. Passing numbers, 84% accuracy for Sporting, but because of the the pressing that we saw from both sides, only 80% for Atlanta United. Long ball accuracy, 39 of 67 for Atlanta United at 58%, crossing 7 of 23 for Sporting Kansas City at 30%. Atlanta United not much better at a 5 for 17 clip. Uh, also on the board on the dribbles, Atlanta 7 of 12, Sporting 11 of 15. And possessions lost more for Sporting Kansas City than Atlanta United. 17 tackles, 19 interceptions, 21 clearances for Atlanta United. Only 11 tackles, 9 picks, and 12 clearances for Sporting Kansas City. Let me get into uh, some of the other players that we saw in the lineup today for Atlanta United. Let me start with Andrew Gutman with you here and what you thought about Gutman's performance on the left and Ronald Hernandez on the right because as we were knowing coming into this match, it was going to be Shallowy and Hernandez, Russell and, and uh, Andrew Gutman. And I think that both of them uh, held themselves up and accounted themselves up pretty well in those duels. Yeah, they did. Um, Gutman, Gutman just fits in and does everything that this team needs him to do. And it's such a good fit. And he's, I think he's more athletic and he's certainly quicker than you might think he is when you just look at him. But... He plays very fast. He plays very strong. He got his ass beat a couple times physically by Johnny Russell, and he didn't back down. And it was a tough game for him to play. Um, as far as Ronald Hernandez, Ron Hernandez is solid. I mean, he's not a Venezuelan national team player for no reason. Uh, I think he still needs to work on, you know, the the chemistry of getting forward with this team, but that's something that's going to come. And, you know, 
depending on who's who's in or who's out, we might see more of this. You know, the, basically the the flying wing backs lineup that Atlanta United rolled out there, where you know it was it was the Oprah lineup of you get a wing back, you get a wing back, you get a you get a fullback, you mm-hmm. get a fullback. Everybody gets a fullback. <laughs> um, we might see more of that. Who knows? But uh, I, I was it, the, 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 none of the, again. We're to the point of we're nitpicking. Because there's nothing that I can really take away from this of, hey, that was bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ozzy Alonso uh, gave you what uh, you anticipated today when it comes to that veteran presence at the back, the sandpaper, whatever whatever words you want to use. It was, it was great to see Ozzy back there taking charge. Uh, Tyler Wolf, once again, we mentioned him uh, on uh, the left-hand side, paired with Andrew Gutman successfully in the preseason, so we knew that that relationship was there. Good work by them across the board as well. So solid work here in this first match for uh, for Atlanta United. And you know, when it comes to coming out of this on the, the, the right foot, making sure that you get that good first impression, get out of the blocks well, this is the first time I think in this series where the home team has actually won the match and it was in front of 67,000 plus here at Mercedes-Benz as Jarrett and I are talking. When it comes to uh, the match in and of itself, anything else when it comes to, to general observations from this first match of the season here in 2022? I mean, you can always jump to conclusions after the first match. Everyone likes to do that because it's very easy to, when you haven't had a game in months to watch, you haven't been able to watch your team or anyone else's, you want to make those snap judgments because everyone's had an off season to kind of recalibrate their weapon. But at the time, they haven't taken it to live firing it's been in the range well now it's live firing now we need to see who needs to do further recalibrations and who is in good shape if we're going to belabor this metaphor mm-hmm. and if you're atlanta united you're in really good shape you are you are though missing a lot of guys and Luis Araujo being the latest of those that's not great you're not you're, i mean it's great that you're able to fight and get a win today in that situation but you don't want to have to be in those situations. So you would love to start getting guys back healthy where you can pick your spots with a Caleb Wiley or a George Campbell. So you're not forcing them into situations that, you know, they might be, you know, they might be intense about, you know, not to say that, you know, not to, not to criticize anything that they would do or the way they would play, but you want to be able to pick spots, put them in situations where they're going to succeed. So yeah, it's easy to just look at it and be like, you know what? That was awesome because the midfield was really good. Tyler Wolf uh, is not flashy. I think he could do be, do better with the final product in the final third. He kind of has that little Darlington Nagby quirk about him, where like, hey, middle of the field, he's fine. Uh, made a great pass to set up Joseph. That Joseph set up for Don Dwyer for the second goal. So the hockey, he probably should have gotten a hockey assist there. Yeah. Uh, getting in the final third, it kind of turned into oh god, oh god, oh god, which that will change. He has shown that he is. He can be pretty cold in the final third. Um, Mateo Sassetu, I still wanted to be a bit more aggressive, but he was really good. And Amar Dadich was and fantastic. In that there ball. were some balls that the sets you sent forward in the attack that were absolutely on point from distance, and it was pretty to see. Yeah. I mean, the, all three of them did a really good job in that midfield. And, again, you know, aside from that, like, you know, yeah, Ozzy Alonso is just going to do Ozzy Alonso things. You know what he is, and he's a calming presence in that midfield. But, you know, you're expecting Marcelino Moreno and you're expecting, you know, Santiago Sosa or uh, Franco Ibarra to be a part of that midfield. And eventually Tiago Almada is a part of the attack as well once the visa is yeah. sorted. Yeah, and to possibly replace a Tyler Wolf character in that. But you didn't have those guys today. And the guys you put in, they stepped right into the system and did the job so well. They should be insanely proud of the work they did. Head uncle, if I remember my numbers correctly, averages a little over four yellows a match. At least he did last season. And I think the number of fouls that he called, I think, had him like seventh or eighth with uh, the average of about four yellows. He had five this time around, three of them in the first 22 minutes to Atlanta United. Miles Robinson, yellow, when Johnny Russell contact, absolutely. Ozzy Alonso laid on a challenge in the 12th. Absolutely. Do you have any idea what the call was? Because I was I was busy and just as confused as everyone else. On the Gutman yellow, which was attached to the Aruju injury, do you have any idea what went down there? 
No, what I think it was, was I think that he gave it to Gutman, thinking that Gutman played the ball away in a time-wasting maneuver. And, uh, no, in that situation, Araujo is going down, and he's very clearly hurt, and Gutman's playing the ball out because he, I'm assuming he didn't hear the whistle. Yeah. Um, which, if you've ever been to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, understandable. It's very loud, especially when Atlanta has the lead. Um, it just seemed unnecessary. Like, it seemed like one of those where the fourth official should have gotten involved with him and like, hey, man, he, like, that dude went down. They played it out, like, trying to get their guy off because he literally can't play anymore. Like, that's, that's one of those where the rule book bends a little bit. You don't mm-hmm. have to be, you don't have to be that kind of a stickler and that kind of a dick about it. It was unnecessary. And then he lets the game flow as the game goes on, which I'm fine with, man. But, like, when Johnny Russell is spearing Andrew Gutman, yeah, and not getting a not getting a card. Come on, man, you you swung the pendulum too hard the other way. So that's your quick look at what happened with Atlanta United in the three one win over Sporting Kansas City. Next up next weekend, a trip to Commerce City, Colorado, to take on the Colorado Rapids. Thanks to Jarrett, who was not at a hundred percent for making it through the show this week, and thanks to you for hanging out with us. Don't forget, Overreaction Monday starts nine o'clock, nine o five Eastern Time on the SDH network so you can get all of the uh, thoughts that you have from the 3-1 win out the door. Let us know on the Twitch pitch, twitch.tv slash soccer down here for all the info coming off of the 3-1 win. So for Jarrett, I'm John. For everybody here at SDH, enjoy the 3-1 win, everybody. That is another round of Salty Takeaways here at SDH. <laughs>